everyone, my name is Jeannie Meehan and I'm thrilled to be here today with the Space Foundation as part of Start Here for Space series to tell you about space weather. Okay, so let's get started. I'm located in the DC area and I manage the National Weather Service Space Weather Program. The National Weather Service has 11 service programs such as severe weather, tropical weather, winter weather, fire weather, and so on. A lesser known program here is the one that I'm lucky to manage, that being space weather. The National Weather Service's weather, water, climate, and space weather warnings and forecasts and its external collaborative activities are critical to saving lives and property and enhances the national economy. My job is to help provide the coordination needed to ensure a space weather ready nation. That is, a nation ready, responsive, and resilient to space weather. The National Weather Service plays a key role in the White House Space Weather Operations Research and Mitigation Interagency Working Group, composed of 34 different departments, agencies, and offices. No one agency could do this alone. We work together, leveraging each other to improve space weather services to the nation and to the world. Sometimes we forget our star, our sun is a star, a very active one at that. We are used to enjoying the stunning sunrises and sunsets and for it to bring warmth during the daytime. We base most of our daily outdoor activities on what the big ball of fire in the sky is doing. Our sun is nearly 109 times the size of Earth, is made of super hot ionized gas called plasma. The core is an astonishing 29 million degrees Fahrenheit with a pressure of about 100 billion times that of the atmospheric pressure here on Earth. Without the sun's intense energy and heat, there would be no life here on Earth. However, this also means the sun is constantly emitting particles and energy out into space. Space weather is a consequence of the erratic behavior of the sun, the nature of the Earth's magnetic field and atmosphere, and our location in the solar system. There are various phenomena that originate from the sun that can result in space weather storms. Outbursts from huge explosions on the sun, such as solar flares and coronal mass ejections, send space weather storms hurling outward towards our solar system. The sun also emits a continuous stream of radiation in the form of charged particles that make up the plasma of the solar wind. We watch our star 24 seven. NOAA Space Weather Prediction Center, also known as SWPSI, is located in Boulder, Colorado, and it operates 24 hours a day and seven days a week. SWPSI continuously monitors conditions on the sun using data received from spacecraft and ground-based observations around the globe. SWPSI leverages space with our observations as well as research and development supported by the National Science Foundation and NASA, Department of Defense, and the USGS. SWPSI forecasters communicate current and future space weather conditions and the possible effects using a variety of products. Some of the products reference the NOAA space weather scales. These scales are similar to those describing hurricanes, such as category four, category five, tornadoes, such as EF5, EF4, and earthquakes, such as seven on the Richter scale. Space weather scales describe geomagnetic storms, solar radiation storms, and radio blackouts. Geomagnetic storms are strong disturbances to the Earth's magnetic field, pose problems for many technological systems and critical infrastructure. The Earth's magnetic field changes in the course of a storm as the near-Earth system attempts to adjust to the jolt of energy from the sun carried in the solar wind. Coronal mass ejections and their effects could disturb the geomagnetic field for days at a time. The most visible attribute of a geomagnetic storm is the aurora, which becomes brighter and moves closer to the equator. The heightened aurora signals the vigorous electrodynamic processes at play as they respond to the burst of energy from the sun. So the radiation storms occur when large quantities of charged particles, protons and electrons are accelerated by processes at or near the sun. When these processes occur, the near Earth space environment is bathed in high energy particles. Earth's magnetic field and atmosphere offer some protection from this radiation, but the amount of protection is a function of altitude, latitude and magnetic field strength. The polar regions are most affected by energetic particles because the magnetic field lines at the poles extend vertically downwards, allowing for those high energetic particles to spiral downward. These electronic protons reach Earth a half hour to several hours after a solar eruption. Solar radiation storms can last a few days 
to hours, depending on the magnitude of the eruption. Solar radiation storms impact the loss of HF radio communications through the polar regions, navigational position errors, and elevated radiation exposure to astronauts and to passengers and crew and aircraft at high altitudes and latitudes and can damage satellite systems. Radio blackouts are caused by bursts of X-ray and extreme ultraviolet radiation emitted from solar flares. Radio blackouts primarily affect high frequency communications, although fading and diminished reception may spill over into very high frequency. The emissions ionize the sunlit side of the earth, which increases the amount of energy lost as radio waves pass through our upper atmosphere of earth. Radio blackouts are among the most common spacer events to affect the earth. Severe events happen approximately 10 times each solar cycle, the solar cycle lasting 11 years. Radio blackouts are by far the fastest solar event to impact our Earth. The X-rays arrive at the speed of light from the sun to the Earth, making advanced warnings very difficult. When flares occur, however, SWIFT measures the intensity and forecasts their duration. Usually, the radio blackouts last for several minutes, but they can last for hours. The impacts of radio blackouts are felt by industries relying on HF radio communications and low frequency signals. Signals, primarily the aviation and marine industries are affected. Industries vulnerable to impacts of space weather include the electric power community. Large currents in the upper atmosphere can induce currents in power lines. Surges from these induced currents can cause massive network failures and permanent damage to electric grid components. Navigation systems also could be degraded such as the GPS signals as they travel through the Earth's upper atmosphere to the receivers down on Earth. For aviation, space weather storms could disrupt communications, pose as a radiation hazard to crew and passengers, and also create problems with flight critical electronic systems. For human space exploration, energetic particles present a health hazard to astronauts on space missions, as well as threats to electronic systems. During space missions, astronauts outside spacecraft are less protected and more exposed to space radiation. For satellite operations, highly energetic ions penetrate the electronic components, causing bit flips in a chain of electronic systems that can result in improper commands within the spacecraft or incorrect data for an instrument. Less energetic particles contribute to a variety of spacecraft surface charging problems, especially during periods of high geomagnetic activity. For the surveying community, magnetic field changes associated with geomatic storms directly affect operations that use the Earth's magnetic field for guidance, such as magnetic surveying, directional drilling, and use of magnetic compasses. The upper atmospheric disturbances cause errors in location obtained from those GPS signals. Communications of all frequencies may also be affected by space weather. High frequency radio commu communications are more routinely affected because this frequency the band depends on reflection by the atmosphere to carry signals, signals create distances across the Earth. Space weather impacts are real. We have experienced them, and here are some examples over the last decade. These industries use space weather watches and warnings to mitigate the effects. Some examples of how industries mitigate the effects are by postponing a launch of a satellite, or if it's already in orbit, they may be turned off or into safe mode. The electric power grid also may adjust their systems to reduce the load and also can disconnect component, components or postpone maintenance. The airlines will divert polar flights and can often request a change in altitude. A 2008 study discovered the worst case space weather event could result in a power grid blackout costing one to two trillion dollars with a recovery period from four to 10 years. This result is debated, however, this, re this result assumes hundreds of transformers are not hardened to withstand the effects of space weather. The recovery period could be long if these massive transformers are indeed damaged by space weather events. We do not have backups lying around in storage. These transformers are massive and very expensive. What these initial studies of the early to late 2000s uncovered, well, is that we have very limited understanding of the actual vulnerabilities to space weather. We also have significant shortfalls in the understanding and protection of space weather. We do not fully understand our star and the environment that we orbit in. 
And until we do, we cannot produce the models in order to issue the forecasts days in advance that we really need to protect our nation. We are decades behind that of terrestrial weather. Much is needed in both the basic and applied research as well as observations. Data collection and model development, and this is all very important for operations. There was also no cohesive strategy for the nation to prepare, mitigate, respond to, and recover from the potentially devastating impacts of space weather. Who is responsible for what? How do we leverage each other and work together as quickly as possible? When these societal and economic impact studies came out, it created a lot of noise in the community. A lot of articles were published and the highest levels of government were alerted. In 2010, the President of the United States called FEMA leadership to the White House and soon after, the space weather was included in, 2000, in the 2011 Department of Homeland Security's Strategic National Risk Assessment in support of the Presidential Policy Directive 8, National Preparedness. The President then tasked the creation of a comprehensive national strategy on space weather. In November of 2014, the Space Weather Operations Research and Mitigation SWARM Task Force was established of 30 federal departments, agencies, and offices. In October of 2015, the National Space Weather Strategy and Action Plan was released. The strategy was then updated in 2019 by the next administration. The SWARM is one of very few the Office of Science and Technology Policy bodies to be carried from one administration to the next to show the importance of this issue. In 2016, the president issued Executive Order 13744, coordinating efforts to prepare the nation for space weather events. Space weather is now included in national policy assessments. In 2019, space weather was included in the FEMA National Threat and Hazard Identification and Risk Assessment, also known as the Thyra, being one of only two hazards to pose a nationwide threat. And the, the second one, the one we are very familiar with now is the pandemic. The legislative branch of our government took notice of the national policies produced by the executive branch. The Senate Commerce Committee introduced the first piece of space weather legislation in April of 2016 in the 114th Congress. Four iterations and two Congresses later, the 116th Congress passed unanimously the Promoting Research and Observations of Space Weather to Improve the Forecasting of Tomorrow Act, also known as the Swift, which was signed into law October of 2020. The PERSWIFT Act will improve the United States' ability to forecast space weather events and mitigate the effects of space weather. The PERSWIFT defines the federal agency roles and responsibilities, the coordination, cooperation, and collaboration needed. It also establishes a space weather advisory group, the SWAG, for the purposes of gathering advice from the academic, commercial, and non-governmental end users to inform the work of the SWARM interagency working group. This will be the very first advisory body to advise the SWARM. The SWAG has an important role to play as defined by the PERSWIFT Act. It will facilitate advances in the space weather enterprise of the nation. It will play a key role in the coordination and facilitation of getting the basic and applied research into space weather operations and in turn, the operational needs back to the research community. This is what we refer to as the research to operations to research process, the R to O to R. Most importantly, the PERSWIFT recognizes partnerships. It is mission critical to that the entire space weather enterprise is working together. This will ensure the nation is ready, responsive, and resilient to space weather. And with that, I will conclude with a few key takeaways that I hope you will gather from this talk. Space weather is a hazard that poses significant risk to the economy and security of nations around the world. NOAA National Weather Service operates 24 by seven to safeguard the nation with space weather information. Policy was necessary to transcend agency missions and sector boundaries on how the federal government will coordinate its efforts on space weather. Implementation of the national strategy is underway to enhance the resilience of critical infrastructure to the adverse effects of space weather on people, economy, and the security of the nation. The SWAG will be instrumental and ensuring the entire space weather enterprise works together to improve the nation's ability to forecast and mitigate space weather events. 
Thank you for joining me today in the Space Foundation Start Here for Space series. It was a pleasure to talk to you about space weather. Take care.